I want to for a few minutes show you the basic message of the Bible. I'm saying how on earth could you do that? The Bible's a huge book. The Bible is a huge book, it covers many subjects, but there's one basic message that the Bible is trying to explain to us. The first point is that God made the earth. He made the universe. He made the fabric of time. And he made it perfect. There was no flaw in God's original creation. You say, well, that doesn't make any sense. The world that we see all around us is full of problems. It is full of sickness. It's got people who are so selfish. How is that God's plan? How is that God's perfect design? Well, the fact is that this is not God's plan. This is not the way that God wants the world to be. This is not how God made it. So if this is not how God made the earth, if this is not how God planned the earth, why is it this way? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's a three-letter word called sin. Sin is anything that is against the mind and will of God. And the original sin, the first sin, was committed by a guy called Adam. When he did something he'd been deliberately told not to do, in full knowledge of what he was doing, disobeyed God. The Bible tells us that sin is like a genetic condition that we inherit from our parents all the way back to Adam. It tells us that we are all like sheep who have gone astray. We're moving further and further away from God's perfect way every day of our lives. The Bible tells us that there's a, now a breakdown in the relationship between God and man. A barrier stopping us having access to God. People have tried many, many different ways of trying to fix this problem. Trying to fix the problems of the earth. They've tried to fill the hole in their lives. They've tried doing that by living a good life, by being religious, by advocating for a particular political system that they think will improve the situation. They've tried filling the void in their lives with success, with momentary pleasures, with relationships. The idea that one special person will make everything right, the happy ever after that we are shown in the Disney movies. Well, the Bible tells us that there is one special person who can change our lives. There is one special person who can alter our destiny. And that is a man called Jesus. The Bible speaks a great deal about him. He's the key figure in all of human history. He was not simply a man. He was actually God come down to earth as a man. He went to the cross at a place called Calvary, and there he died. He died not because of the wrongs that he had done. He had done nothing wrong in the entirety of his life. But Jesus went and died on the cross to take the punishment for our sins. He went to pay the debt that we were unable to pay. It was only him that could achieve this. It was only him that could bring salvation. How do we know that he succeeded? Well, the answer came three days after he died. When he died on the cross, he was taken down and buried. And three days later, he rose again. His literal bodily resurrection, which is the best attested historical fact of all the ancient world, it shows that God found his payment satisfactory. Jesus, not long after this, went back to heaven and Christians are waiting for him to come back and take them to be with him in heaven. There are some who will tell you that everyone on this earth will be saved. When they stand in front of God, God's love will be sufficient. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. Yes, God's love was shown to be sufficient at Calvary, but he does not force his love upon those who do not wish it. We have a responsibility. We have to turn and believe on Jesus. We have to accept what he did 2,000 years ago for us. But this is not the end. Becoming a Christian, believing on Jesus, is only the beginning 
of an uh, experience that allows us the opportunity to grow not further away from God, but closer to God during the rest of our lives, to become more like God in his character, in his actions. And this is the aim of a Christian, to become more like the man that saved us. That is why we do good things as Christians, not to earn our way into heaven, but simply because we love the King of heaven. God has given us as Christians a task. It's often referred to as the Great Commission. It is to go and tell people who are still in that default position of sin, of brokenness, of sorrow, about a God that loves them and about a way to become more like God. For a Christian, the future is heaven. For a Christian, the future is eternal life. But I must warn you, for those that do not accept the message of the Bible, the message of God's love, the future is a place called hell and the lake of fire. And the greatest description I can give of hell it is a place without God, a place without love, a place without light, a place without happiness, a place without. The decision is yours. But the decision must be made now. The Bible tells us now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation.